jump it on with me guys yes thank you for taking time to do this today oh my gosh it's my pleasure So Maddie is my girl. Like she is one of those characters where if she was real, I'm like, we would be friends. We would get into all kinds of good trouble. <laughs> I just, I just want to hang out. So I know you can't share a lot, but what is Maddie getting up to in Sonic 3? Because that trailer, she looks like she's ready to kick some butt and I'm here for it. I know. I think so. Maddie is, you know, from the very beginning, I told him, I'm like, guys, I have an eight-year-old. It's awesome. But I don't want to be pregnant in the movie where I'm sitting there on the phone the whole time. Please. There are women out there who kick butt every day, you know? And so um, we we start, we see them kind of, her and James's character, Tom, kind of like the, the boys are doing their thing, you know? They're out and about. This is the first time you see them as a team going out together and we're home kind of like okay and so we actually get to be part of um some of the mission this time and and it's super exciting that you know the writers were like all right Maddie doesn't just sit around and she's active and proactive and not only does she she's like the heart right of, of of the movie in the sense of like nurturer and stands up for her kids and like you know all those things but she's also like like we all are like badasses Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Hi, this is Kathy. I'm so sorry. I'm having issues with my camera this morning. I apologize. But I'm thrilled to be here talking to you. We love Sonic. I love your character. So I wanted to know emotional themes. What are some of the key emotional themes in Sonic that you think are important for children to understand? Oof. I think a really big one is not allowing your anger to make decisions of revenge, right? Like, not allowing um, just because you're upset about something in the moment, does don't allow it to drive you to decisions that you might regret later. And so I think that's a really big one. I think another one is like, you honestly get to see, you know, uh, Knuckles and uh, Tails and Sonic really uh, become a team, right? And whether they're bickering or whatever that looks like, but they they really get to work together. Um, in this one, and that's exciting. So yeah, I think there are, and I think they also team up with somebody that is very unlikely that they team up with. And sometimes that happens in real life where you're like, I remember my my daughter at one point at school, you know, something happened where she was getting bullied or whatever. And I was like, <laughs> like a mama bear. And, and she's like, mom, everybody deserves a second chance, right? And so the people who you most likely, you know, you know, me, I was like, no, they don't. <laughs> but like, you know, the people you think that are unlikely who are deserving of chances actually are. They do, everybody does deserve another chance. So I think you're going to see some really cool uh, shifts in the dynamic of te what team means. Amazing. Thank you so much. Of course, Kathy. Thank you. Hi, Tika. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I, my camera's off. I'm like in between school pickups. That's why you hear my daughter Girl, also. You, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You ain't ever got to apologize <laughs> to me from one parent to another. Look, <laughs> it is what it is. You're here. So I just want to ask, um, Maddie has always been like a grounding force for Sonic. Um, and uh, without giving too much away, I just want to know, how do you feel like your relationship with Sonic deepens in this movie um, and or deepens or shifts and in, in the movie? Man, I feel like with every movie, every film, like she gets closer and closer. Like even when you saw um, the, the, the series with Knuckles, like I think even with Knuckles, like she's like, guys, you driving me nuts? Here's how to actually do it. You know what I mean? Or you can't do that, you know? I think, my love, my personal love of Sonic has grown. I feel like he's actually my kid, which is so crazy. I feel very protective of him. And um, I feel protective of all of them, honestly. I just think it grows with them growing up, right? Them, him finding his people, you know? And, you know, the thing that you want as a parent is for your kids to find their people and be an active and good participant in the world. And, but when they actually do that, it's like heartbreaking. And so um, I think that's kind of where she is, where she's just like, oh, we're doing all the right things. And 
he's growing into who he should be growing into. Um, but that doesn't mean our love goes anywhere. You know, we're always there whenever they need. We're down for the ride for whatever they need. Thank you so much for your time. And I also just want to say I specifically had to subscribe to Paramount for the Knuckles series. My kids are obsessed with Sonic. My seven-year-old asks me like every day, is the movie out yet? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And the great thing about the movie, you know, I think like the first two, it is literally for everybody. I think the adults are going to be like, there are jokes that are funny that are going to fly over their heads. There are Easter eggs all over the place. There's just so much goodness that it's like a thing that you can go with everybody, right? Like you, you don't have to leave somebody home. You're like, oh, but it's, it's, it's really great. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Chica. Um, I just have to say, I love you and the character you play Maddie in the Sonic films. Um, as Ashley was saying, you're so relatable and I would definitely love to be friends with that character. <laughs> you my heart my heart is filled I'm gonna get a glass of wine after this I'm gonna be like they want to be my friend I think all the moms out there can relate to you know this crazy parenting of like you said you see Sonic as your son now and so I think um as an on-screen mom it just jumps to all of us moms watching off screen so very relatable and you're just you portray the character so fun and so loving so Robin, congrats another Sonic um, installment, I would love to know from you, what's it mean to be a part of this iconic franchise? Robin, you have no idea. Like, I feel like I'm living in my childhood dream. It's weird. You know, I grew up, you know, in a family where my brother was a gamer and he would barely let me touch the controller, but I would be sitting there like, you know, whether it was this or Zelda or whatever. And I'd be like, Oh my God, you know, and so to watch and to see, you know, I, I said this before one time, I said, it is a blessing to be part of a franchise. It's an even more of a blessing to be part of a successful franchise. And it's even more of a blessing to be part of characters that you actually grew up watching. And so, and had no idea that that would happen. So I, it means everything to me. I take my role seriously, no matter how big, how small it is, honestly, I feel like I'm part of your kid's legacy. You don't understand how many times in the airport kids either write me little notes on napkins or they're like, Sonic's mom, this is the best day of my life. And I'm like, mine too. Because now I'm part of the thread of like their childhood, right? Like, and to me, to me as a mom, that means a lot. And so I take it very seriously. So thank you. Well, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Hi, it's Hika. I'm Kami. So nice to meet you. Hi, Kami. Nice to meet you. My family is so excited for this movie. My 11-year-old just asked me this morning. He's like, when are we seeing that again, mom? Isn't that soon? It's December. You know, <laughs> so we are psyched. Absolutely psyched. <clears throat> so um, you and James Marston, you guys have such a great, fun on-screen chemistry. What's it like working with him? Is there any fun, like, behind-the-scenes stories you could share with us? I already asked Paramount. I never, I never want to work with James Marsden ever again. Um, <laughs> dude, <laughs> Jamie, James is one of my favorite, most favorite people in the world. What you see is what you get. And he literally has me dying laughing. I, I, I always ask him, I'm like, are we even working? Like, what are we doing? Because we, we, we do like, there's this like real good banter that we have in real life. But also we transferred it to the screen of like, you know, we go like go back and forth and you'll see, I think you guys will think it's funny in, in the movie because we kind of found our sweet spot. And I think the reason why the chemistry comes off the way it does is because we actually really do get along so well. He's so funny. And it's like, it's unnatural that I tell him he he's not a very good looking guy, but he's funny. And so <laughs> I was like, ah, you got to be funny too. So yeah, um, but yeah, no, so it's, 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 I love working with him and it's just been such an honor and he's been around for so long. So I feel like I learned so much, but we actually have a really good relationship. I can't wait to see the two of you banter in the next movie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Kami. Hi, I'm Christina with the Patricios. 
Um, I have two children as well. I have a 10 year old and a 13 year old. And it, it's crazy to think that the first one came out like right before the pandemic started. And you guys have like carried on not only with a sequel, but getting a third movie too. This is so exciting. My son now is 13. And it, like all of us, I mean, he is counting down the days. He's a huge fan. But my question is, when reading the script, was there a scene in particular where you were like, I cannot wait to film this scene or I can't wait to see this scene like play out without giving too much away? Yeah. I mean, one Merry Christmas. Okay, joyful in the background. And okay, girl. You said, you said Thanksgiving is over, Christmas is on the way. Uh, <laughs> um, yes. And when here's what I will say, what I can say. When I walked into these set pieces, I was like, like, I'm just like, take a picture. I need to take a picture. I need to take another picture, you know? Um, but there is one particular one. Um, and I think you see it in the trailer. It's just so fun. Like the writers did something really cool that I, I hope you guys laugh at and also are like, this is so cool. Um, yeah, I, I I think the set pieces are just bigger and just, there's just more, there's more disaster. There's more excitement. There's more adventure. Um, the set, there's more blowing things up. There's like a lot of different things happening. And so I think when I walked in in one particular set piece, I was just blown away. Like somebody like manufactured this in their brain and now it's here. It's incredible. Your kids are going to love it. Thank you, Christina. Thanks. Hey, Tika. I'm Mike Manalo. How are you? Hey, Mike. <laughs> um, no, uh, one of the things that I think the Sonic franchise really embodies is it's one of those franchises where the human characters are as likable and as interesting as the actual animated characters too. And we've seen Donut Lord and Pretzel Lady grow from Sonic 1 to Sonic 3. And I have to ask, what's your favorite, what are your favorite um, aspects of the character development that you've seen Maddie go through from the first movie to the third movie? And where do you want to see it go into the future? Oh, man. Oh, Mike, I love that question. I love all your questions. I'm just, I feel like I'm sitting around with my friends chatting out by a fire. Um, <laughs> um, really good question. From the first one, you know, what I loved about Pretzel Lady is that they gave her a name, like Donut Lord, you know what I mean? And I was like, oh, they think I'm really good at yoga. I'm terrible. <laughs> um, but what I do love, when you when you nickname somebody, that's like, a, it's a nuance of feeling close to them, like feeling like connected tissue to them, because I do it all the time. Um, and so like, if, if Christina is my friend, I'll be like, see what's up where are we going tonight you know what I mean like you know and it's like a it's a connection but what I did love is like how she was introduced to Sonic it was like what are you what you, I'm a and, and they gave her a real job a veterinarian right and so she has agency she's not but you know she wasn't as much part of like the action in the first one but like still she was like the nurturer the one who's like, Tom, you're crazy, I'm down, right? Like you've established like she's down for the cause. Even if she doesn't understand what's going on, I'm tying, we're tying my sister up and we're leaving her here, you know? <laughs> and then in the second one, it's like, wow. Like I got to be part, my sister and I, Natasha, got to be part of like the, the action of it all, right? I'm ducking things, I'm throwing things, I'm breaking people out, you know, and which made me feel like a growth period, a growth point of her that she's not just going to sit at home or be on the phone like, hey, Tom, what's going on? You know, it's like she's part of the action. And and she was part of like the, what I love what you said in the beginning was the human characters are just as likable, which I think Jeff Fowler knew that had to happen because you got to care enough to not just be there for Sonic. And because he also knew like, he wanted it to be a world that encapsulates like, this is why it is a great family movie, right? You can go with your boys, you can go with your girls, or you can go with your family and your kids. Because what's important is the main, the, the, the icons, right? Like all of those characters, Sonic, all of them. Then the action, the adventure, the story, like the actual story and the humans who are surrounding them because now they're on earth and in our world. And so I think Jeff Fowler knew that the gumbo had to be just right. It could not be more of one thing than the other. And I think he found the sweet spot. 
And which makes me so excited to like read it and not be like, ah, she's, I'm not like, eh, she's, they're cool, but we're Sonic. You know what I mean? <laughs> or we're Shadow, you know? Um, so I think for me, it's like the, the, the gumbo works. And I think I love that our characters are so likable, especially people feel close to them. And, um, and you know why Sonic actually likes his family. <laughs> Absolutely. I love that gumbo. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, Mike. Hi, Tika. Thank you very much for your time today. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'll be honest, like when the first Sonic came out, I was skeptical. Being a huge Sonic fan, I was like, I don't know how this is going to work. But after I walked out that theater, I couldn't stop talking about the movie, telling all my friends, I'm like, go watch this. You're going to enjoy it. Uh, but my question to you is, because you're part, you said you were talking about earlier about being a part of a good franchise with the Sonic, but you're also part of another fun franchise, the Ride Along franchise. So my <laughs> question to you would be, if uh, Angela, James, and Ben had Sonic Knuckles and Tails living with them, how would they react to these characters being there? Angela, James, and Ben. <laughs> um, well, um, Kevin's character would be the same height, so it would be perfect for him. You know what I mean? Like, it would be amazing. He'd like have somebody he could be like, stand up to and be like, look, you know? Um, <laughs> but I love, I love short people. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, I, I, it would be interesting because at this point, he would be a cop, right? And they'd be kind of like, he'd, oh my God, I'm married to another cop. That's crazy. I didn't even think of that. Um, so I think we would definitely be a protected household, but I think also they would give him a lot of problems, a lot of, they would go on missions together. He would think he's better than he actually is. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Angela would have to be like, honey, you, you're not fast they're gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? It would be fun, actually. It'd be a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, Victor. All right. So mom to mom, we know that parenting is tough, whether it's super powered hedgehogs or human babies. <laughs> we are in the trenches. What is one piece of parenting advice or a lesson that Maddie has learned that you think would resonate with all the moms watching and dads? Ooh. Jeez, Ashley, that's like a... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what I get is deep the there. one piece of advice? Um, <laughs> I think the one piece of advice you got it. I mean, to me, for I think for moms, for parent, for whoever, parents, fathers, whoever, I think you got to give yourself grace to know that you're doing enough, you know, um, even when you think, you know, your kids are going psycho crazy or they've made some decisions that you're like, who are you? <laughs> what are you using your noggin? What's going on? What have I been doing for all these years? And then there's that one moment where you're just like, like recently, my daughter, I was getting her something out of the pantry and I wasn't, you know, you're just mindlessly like, okay, here. She's like, mom, you know, you're a good mom, right? And I go, I am? She goes, yeah, you didn't know that? And I go, yeah, yes, I know that. And she goes, it didn't sound like you do. You're a good mom. And so after all the craziness of trying to raise these human beings, we all know it can be really tough. Just know all the goodness that you're putting inside of them, it's there and you're a good parent. You're really good, even if they don't say it. Like you're you're doing it, you're putting all the ingredients and they're, it's being shaken and it's being mixed up and it's being perfected, even if it's not perfect, but it's for them perfect, right? Like you are doing a good job. So give yourself grace in that. And uh, that's what I can say. I love that, thank you. Thank you. So to, expand the family question. So my question is for fam family dynamics. In what ways does the film explore family relationships and how can that influence parenting discussions at home? I think um, uh, it's a lot about team. Yeah. You know, it's a lot about every, no matter how big or how young or how old you are in the household or even extended family members, everybody plays a part right? And everybody's mm -hmm. important in playing that, those parts. Now you might mess up. Somebody might yeah. mess up there. You know, <laughs> the choir is not always singing on key, you know, 
<laughs> True. So somebody might be messing up, but they are, they're needed and they're very necessary to the fabric of the family. And I think that's something that is very um, empowering to watch, you know, even in this form, but also something that you guys can talk about. And I think it'll be invigorating to take home and, 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 and speak on that. I love that. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Hey, Miss. Hey, little Miss Pink, my favorite color. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a question? Oh. <laughs> no, she just really wanted to say hi. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Okay, <laughs> so I have a question in regards to um, Easter eggs. You mentioned them. Is there one potentially you can share for us to be on the lookout for? No, you got to Easter eggs. You got to find them yourself. You know what I mean? Like the, the, mom, the magnificent, that would not be fun if I told you where it is. Oh, we'll be on the lookout for sure. That's always my kid's favorite thing, especially yeah. for these movies where, you know, um, it's based on the video game or the story ahead of time. Um, my son will actually take a notebook in and start writing down all of his thoughts. And then afterwards we go out and everyone shares all the fun things they found. So, oh, wow. Yeah, it'll be Maybe. fun to see for sure. It'll be fun. It'll be, I think, I think you'll enjoy it. So if Maddie were a player playable character in the Sonic games, which powers or abilities would she have? Oh, I love, I love the idea that shadow can control chaos energy. And sometimes there's a lot of chaos in this world and in our own world. And I just want to be like controlling the chaos energy and taking it and turning it for good or formulating something where I can, I can, I can function right within the chaos. And I, I take it and I'm like, use all that energy for something else, which is actually an amazing idea of like taking chaos energy, the chaoticness around our lives, using it for something positive. Right. Like I, I, I like that idea. Actually, I can, I can do that, <laughs> but I, I would like to do that and like do what shadow gets to do. I, I like that. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Describe your movie in just three words. Oof. Bigger. Bigger. Bestest. <laughs> And um, I know it's not a word, guys, um, but uh, bigger, better, even more extraordinary. I know that's way more than three. I can count, but that's, you know, <laughs> it's very hard. Um, one of the things that I really like, actually, about Sonic versus Shadow, really, is, you know, you get to understand why they are the way that they are based on their upbringings. You know, Sonic knew kindness, Shadow knew something else, and that bred a lot of anger. Um, so I think it's something that, like, Sonic and the team would probably have to kind of understand where Shadow is coming from to sort of at least try and reason with him. Having said all that, I think the world right now could use a little bit of kindness, um, mm -hmm. you know, and the combative nature and conflicting nature of a lot of folks um, is is very much the first place people go to. So having said all that, um, what is the hopeful takeaway that you want mm. the world to get from Sonic 3 after seeing Sonic and Shadow's characters and all of that? Hmm. I think without giving away anything, Sometimes when you are able to ask somebody who is in a chaotic situation or they're acting out and trying to understand where they're coming from, um, I know a lot of people want to close people out no matter where you are in your life, right? You're like, I just don't, I, I do it too. Like not dealing with it, da, 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 da. But a lot of times you'll get, there's more reasons than we will ever know why people act out. And I think if we just take a breath and get out of our own silos and ask the questions 
and listen, I really think we'll ha- we would have a better understanding of each other, no matter where you are on the spectrum of life, right? And you can still respect that in a person, right? And you can still respect the humanity in the person or the alien, you know? And so, yeah, that's that's my answer. Beautiful, thank you. Yeah. I take it again. Um, so my question is, as, as a parent, every now and then like your favorite changes. Like for me, one day it's like, my daughter does something for me. It's like, oh yeah, she's my favorite today. Another day it'll be my son will do something. But for the, in the Sonic series, like as, as more characters are introduced, mm-hmm. do you find that your favorite changes through each movie or is it always just gonna be that one character? Yeah, it depends on the day. It's like, is Sonic being a little brat? Like he thinks he knows everything, <laughs> you know what I mean? Is Knuckles messing up everything in my house, you know? Uh, tail, I mean, Tails to me is still like, you know, I feel like it changes and it depends, but I feel like Tails has such a, like the logic in him and the, he's always the balance between everybody. And I just feel like, oh, can I like have you like for real in my life? Cause I just feel like you would solve a lot, you know? Cause sometimes it's my daughter and sometimes it's my husband. And I'm like, sometimes y'all can both go or one can stay, you know? <laughs> so I totally understand where you're coming from, Victor, and, and your question. I think it changes. It depends on the day. But I think for me, I think sometimes Tails is just like the sweetest and the voice. I'm just like, oh, you know. I feel the same way. Tails would be my favorite if I had yeah. to give up my kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome.